Welcome, and thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Jeffrey Daw, along with Al Lambert. I am co-president of the Aurora Historical Society. I would like to call the meeting to order, and again, thank you for attending. Uh, we had uh, Nermarakis and MPP Don Gallagher Murphy registered, as well as Councillor Ron Weiss. Uh, I don't believe Councillor Weiss was able to make it due to a, a last minute family commitment. For the meeting, we do ask you to keep your microphone muted and please use the chat box function or the uh, function to raise your hands at the bottom of your screen if you would like to make a comment or have a question about the presentation. And uh, please be aware that the meeting is being recorded. As in previous years, for the purpose of voting, we will do a reverse vote. When a vote is required, I will ask for nay votes only. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you wish to vote against the motion, please raise your hand. Keep it raised until your vote is acknowledged. Alternately, you may include your nay vote in the chat box. And that is being monitored by Julie, who is our office administrator. As a reminder, only guests who are members in good standing of the Aurora Historical Society are eligible to vote. I would now like to introduce our curator manager, Kathleen Behe who will read the land acknowledgement. Kathleen. Hi everyone. Okay, so we acknowledge that the Anishinaabe lands on which we live and work are the traditional and treaty territory of the Chippewas of Georgina Island, as well as many other nations. As the closest First Nation community to Aurora, we recognize the special relationship the Chippewas have with the land and waters of this territory. We further acknowledge that Aurora is part of the treaty lands of the Mississaugas and Chippewas, recognized through Treaty 13 from 1805, as well as the Williams Treaties of 1923. Today, this is meeting place is still home to many Indigenous people, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work, live, and play on this land. Thanks, Kathleen. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the agenda, which was mailed out, emailed out on Friday, and it was slightly uh, amended on Friday to acknowledge that uh, MPP uh, Gallagher Murphy will be speaking this evening. Uh, I have a motion. It's been moved by Dan Revington and Jacqueline Stewart to approve the agenda as circulated. Uh, not in favor, if you could please raise your hand or put it in the chat box. Kathleen, any hands raised or chat box? Okay, thank you very much. Um, seeing none, the motion is therefore carried. Slide four, please, Kathleen. And this is the motion to approve the 2022 AGM minutes as circulated. It has been moved by Bob McRoberts and seconded by Jacqueline Stewart. Uh, I'd like to call for any errors or omissions. That anybody managed to catch in the minutes from last AGM? Kathleen? We're good. Thank you. Uh, seeing no objections, I uh, declare the motion is carried. Been a while since I've done this, folks. I would now like to introduce Mayor Tom Rackus. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. It's an honor to join you this evening and bring greetings on behalf of the Town of Aurora and Aurora Town Council. The Aurora Historical Society truly has a special place in my heart, and I know many residents feel the same way too. While there's no doubt that Aurora is growing and has a bright future ahead of it, it's our history <laughs> that makes us unique and special. Our community is truly blessed to be home to many historic and unique locations, such as the Hillary House, Church Street School, town park, and so much more. Not only do our town's heritage resources enhance the diversity, beauty, and richness of our natural and built environments, they also provide a greater sense of place and identity within our community. The town is committed to preserving that history and enhancing heritage buildings and streetscapes, streetscapes, and we are proud to have a strong partnership with the Aurora Historical Society that helps support our arts, heritage, and culture as our town continues to change and evolve. The Aurora Historical Society has been a staple in our community for nearly 60 years and run by a dedicated set of volunteers who share a strong commitment to the preservation of our local history and sharing the stories of our past. 
I would like to express my sincere thanks to all current and past members of the Aurora Historical Society for your ongoing contributions to our community. And a special thanks to the Board of Directors for their hard work that you do to preserve our town's rich legacy. Your work keeps our history alive and helps younger generations to learn more about our beautiful town. And I look forward to continuing our strong partnership in heritage preservation and to continue to support the important work that all of you do. So I hope all of you have a great meeting and thanks for having me here this evening. Jeff, you're on mute still. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate your remarks. And uh, by the time I get this Zoom mute unmute thing figured out, we'll actually be back in person. Next, we have MVP Don Gallagher Murphy. Don, please. Good evening, everyone. I am so pleased to uh, join you this evening. A uh, big hello from my Clara Newmarket. Um, so I'm not too sure where everybody is this evening, but I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining this important meeting for the Aurora Historical uh, Society and specifically for Hillary House. Uh, really, Hillary House has been... Um, a critical staple in our Aurora community. And I'm so pleased with all the work that all the volunteers have managed to do in keeping uh, Hillary House alive. And some of the uh, projects that you um, have ventured onto, like having the Salvation Army come in at around the Christmas time to put on a display. I think these are great um, opportunities to further grow our community and further grow what Hillary House means to our community. So I look forward uh, to seeing more, um, uh, how shall I say, innovative approaches on how to bring in uh, community members, because I think that's what it's all about. And that's what history does, is it, it keeps it uh, alive in the past and into the future. So on behalf of the province of Ontario, thank you very much uh, for all the work you do. And uh, do know it uh, does not go unnoticed uh, how much your contributions mean uh, to our community. Uh, so thank you very much again for having me. And I do wish you all a, a great AGM. Thank you. Thank you very much, Don. We appreciate it. And we appreciate you uh, joining us from the car. I uh, and a number of us on this call can appreciate how busy you are. So we very much appreciate you attending as well. We will now move to the uh, president's remarks. And uh, on behalf of Al, it's my pleasure to speak about some of the things that we did in 2022. For those of you who have had an opportunity uh, to visit the house, you will note that the veranda project is finished. Uh, we had... Um, uh, it was finished up by Nikki Crone. Is that her last name? Kathleen did a, a, a magnificent job, especially on the last work out front. Um, we started the project because of safety issues, uh, and it looks so much better now. We're very, very, very pleased with that. We had representation at a number of community events, and there you'll see Al and I at the Aurora Home Show uh, and also at uh, the Chambers Tree Sale. A great, great turnout to both of those events. We had a return of our heritage programming and tours, and Kathleen is responsible for much of that work. We had some successful fundraising events. The Hillary House Ball came back. We had a pretty successful golf tournament last year. Uh, very pleased with those. The High School History Awards, we continue to do that. Uh, we're looking at how we can increase our, uh, our awards there. Uh, it's always a great opportunity to uh, connect with the high schools and, and to help uh, foster their love of history. Multiple collaborations with community partners, and uh, Don just mentioned the collaboration we did with the Salvation Army, uh, which was a great event here, a great uh, display that was here at Hillary House for a number of months. And last but not least, the care and feeding of Hillary House. And for all of you who own a house, you'll know that the older the house, the more care and feeding it needs. So uh, a, a huge thank you to to all our volunteers who come and take care of that. Uh, thinking of John and Marjorie Bear, who do an incredible amount of work 
in 2022 on the outside, on the gardens. Um, Al, who has managed to uh, get a lot of people coming out to help do cleanups and things like that, as well as Michelle and her family. So a great, great deal of thanks go to our volunteers for helping us keep Hillary House looking as neat and trim as it is. That is all I've got with respect to the president's remarks. I don't know, Al, if you have anything that you would like to add? No, Ed, Jeff, thanks very much. I think you summed it up well. Just uh, welcome everybody and uh, and thank you very, very much. It's uh, great to see so many people out to our AGM. Back to you, Jeff. Thanks, Al. We'll move to the Treasury's report. Um, and you will note that on Friday, we sent out an amended uh, financial statement um, between the auditor and our bookkeeper and our sharp eyed board members, we found that there was an error uh, and that turned out to be an accrual area with some accrual error with some legal fees last year. So the, uh, the financials were restated uh, and they were sent out to you on Friday. Uh, we would ask you to destroy any copies that were emailed to you, just delete them uh, from last, uh, I guess but before last Friday, uh, also, we'll be destroying the, the copies that we have. We'll be resubmitting our amended financials to Revenue Canada along with a, with a new charitable uh, return. We saw in 2022, pardon me, uh, we saw our operations uh, start to return to pre-COVID norms. Uh, continuous hard work and dedication of our staff, volunteers, and board members. We staged two successful events. Uh, and I re alluded to those earlier, the golf tournament in the spring, and of course, the return of the Hillary House Ball in the fall. Very successful. Grateful recipients of a donation from the Koffler Foundation and also received funds from three COVID-specific grants. We experienced a slight decrease in our revenue, but we did a, experience a significant increase in expenses last year as a result of increased staffing, professional fees, and the final charge for the restoration work in the veranda project. However, funds were set aside for that restoration work from the Restricted Building and Grounds Fund. Number of sources of income, we wish to recognize and thank Aurora for their significant, the town of Aurora for their significant and continued support. That's a hint, Tom, continued support. The revenue breakdown by percentage, I don't need to go over this. Once again, the government funds account for most of our funding. We did manage to increase our donation funding and, and special event funding last year. And we're very pleased that we could do that. Um, it shows that we are actively engaged in making sure that we're doing what we can uh, to ensure the, the ongoing success of Hillary House. In funding, there was some specific funds. The Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy was finished in 2022. The Canadian Emergency Business Account, for those who remember, that was closed out successfully in 2022. We raised over $2,500 from our golf tournament. Uh, that was at Westview, and a big shout out to Westview Golf Course for their assistance in that. The Hillary House Ball raised over $16,000, and it was incredibly successful, attended by over 100 guests. Uh, had a great band, uh, delicious meal, and a uh, uh, thank you to uh, the staff at the Venetian for their, their work in supporting us with that event. And again, as I mentioned, we had a, a donation from the Koffler Foundation, and um, sorry, I just got lost in my notes here. Um, we did receive $6,500 in donations as well as that coffer donation. So again, thanks to all our volunteers for that. As I mentioned, in the grant department, although the grant programs for COVID have mostly finished, we were successful to read funds for the uh, recovery fund for heritage operations, museum advanced program through the government of Canada, as well as a business support grant and energy cost grant, rebate grant through the province of Ontario. Additionally, we continue to receive the Community Museum Operating Grant, CMOG, uh, from the province of Ontario and the Canada Summer Jobs Grant uh, from the government of Canada, which funds two 12-week summer positions, uh, which is a big help in terms of us continuing to catalog our uh, collections. And as I already mentioned, uh, we did discuss, or, or we did send out the revised issue or our finances, and uh, so we do apologize for that uh, error and that oversight uh, 
and we will strive to make sure that does not happen again. But here's a, a, a chart showing our 2020, 21, and 22 audited financials. I think this is actually the first time we managed to uh, go audited for the uh, for the year for the general meeting that we are having. Uh, as you can see that our total revenue did increase uh, from 2020 to 21 and dropped us slightly in 22. Uh, we did transfer reserves, as I mentioned, that was to cover the expense for the renovation project for the veranda. So I will move this and it's being seconded by John Smale. And I, at this point, I, I would ask if there's any questions or comments on this item. And either, like I say, raise your hand or put a, a message in the chat box. Kathleen? Seeing no questions and uh, no objections, uh, I will declare the motion carried. And thank you very much for your support. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I would now request a motion to approve the 2021 audited financial statements. And they have been circulated, is also moved by myself as well as seconded by John Smale. And if there's any comments or questions, once again, uh, either raise your hand or put your uh, comments in the chat box. Kathleen? Once again, we have none, seeing none, I will declare that the motion is carried. Thank you for that. And finally, to approve the amended 2022 audited financial. Moved by myself, seconded by John Smale. Any comments or questions, please either raise your hand or put a message in the chat box. Kathleen? Seeing none, declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. And finally, I would uh, move that Bateman, Graham, Fitzpatrick, CPA be appointed as the 2023 auditors for the Aurora Historical Society. Moved by me and seconded again by John Smale. Kathleen? I will declare that motion carried. Thank you very much. I will now turn it back to Kathleen uh, for her curator's report. Kathleen, please. Uh, thank you, Jeff, and um, hello, everyone. It's nice to see so many um, familiar faces, um, albeit uh, virtually again. Um, so throughout 2022, the AHS continued to offer exhibitions, programming, and outreach to engage the community. We maintained our virtual programs that um, were started in 2021, and we're excited to invite people back into Hillary House um, as the COVID-19 restrictions uh, began to lift. Um, for, uh, in 2022, sorry, we maintained our permanent staff complement, being uh, myself as curator manager and um, Julie, our administrative assistant. We were excited to welcome um, Celine back uh, to the AHS as our new programming and outreach coordinator on a one-year contract. Um, as I'm sure most of you have seen, um, that has been extended for another year. We saw um, Grace come back as an intern from uh, Centennial College Museum and Cultural Management's postgraduate program. And then, uh, as just Jeff mentioned earlier, we were um, fortunate again to receive a grant from the Canada Summer Jobs Program, um, and that allowed us to hire um, two emerging museum professionals um, for 15-week um, contracts. Um, the CSJ covered part of that, uh, and the AHS covered the other part. Um, and then, uh, like Jeff said, their assistance and contributions on projects in 2022 are extremely valuable uh, and helpful. And we're very grateful um, to them and also to have the opportunity to help them with their professional development as well. So uh, again, um, with the care and maintenance of Hillary House is um, of top priority to the AHS. And uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, historic uh, houses bring a wide variety of unique challenges. Um, and listed here are just the major maintenance projects uh, that we tackled in 2022. All right, with the assistance of Grace, our intern, <clears throat> excuse me, Um, we continued with ongoing collections management projects, including inventory and cataloging and photographing over 400 artifacts and archival documents. 
Um, additionally, we did complete an inventory of the archival collection, um, which outlined important future projects, uh, collections management projects. And uh, we also featured um, three exhibitions throughout the year. So starting in March through the end of April, we hosted um, the exhibition, A Place to Grow, which is a traveling exhibition from the Royal Botanical Gardens in Burlington, which highlighted the history of gardening in a Canadian context. We also um, had a short history on uh, Garden Aurora to go along with that. We also worked closely with the Aurora Cultural Center, um, the culmination of a, about a two-year project, um, as well as with the Society of York Region Artists on the exhibition Inspirations from a Space of Healing, which was a collaborative exhibition on display here at Hillary House, as well as in the ACC's temporary gallery at Town Hall. And that was on display from November until um, January of this year. And the exhibition showcased um, contemporary or new art inspired by the theme of healing and Hillary House's collection of artifacts. And finally, um, as mentioned before, in December, uh, we partnered with the local Salvation Army Northridge Community Church and the Salvation Army Archives to showcase the history of the Salvation Army in Newmarket and Aurora. These um, partnerships were incredibly successful um, and really, uh, I think, showcased the power and um, potential opportunities for um, this type of collaboration within Aurora. Okay, so we were um, excited to continue offering our regular programming and introduce a few new events in 2022. We did continue with um, virtual as well as hybrid and in-person uh, options for our audiences throughout the year. Um, and I've listed them here, but I'm gonna go through them through the slides, so I won't read them off here. <laughs> We, our popular uh, speaker series program ran in a virtual format in the beginning of the year um, and then a hybrid model for the second half. So we did host nine of these presentations throughout the year and participation remained fairly consistent when compared to 2021. Uh, so that's a picture of Ted Barris on the right there. And on the left is a, an example of one of our social media posts. So we did continue to create uh, interesting and engaging social media content to uh, to our online audiences and we've really found our focus on consistent and varied social media um, content has resulted in greater um, engagement uh, which I'll talk about a little bit later. I apologize I have a, a cough as I'm sure many of you can relate to so I'm trying to mute so I don't cough in everyone's ear. Okay, for in-person events, um, once the COVID-19 restrictions lifted at the beginning of the year, we started to bring back some of our in-person events, workshops, and programs, which saw um, new and returning guests coming back inside Hillary House. Uh, this included two heritage craft workshops. So that's in the top left-hand corner is our um, cross-stitch workshop, I believe. Uh, four holiday themed events, including the Easter egg decorating workshop, um, Halloween at Hillary House, wreath making workshop, and a family Christmas. We hosted four yoga sessions on the grounds, um, thanks to our lovely volunteer, Sandy Bundy, who is on the call. So thank you, Sandy. Um, two historic walking tours in partnership with the Aurora Public Library, four educational programs. And finally, we partnered with the town of Aurora and um, Royal Rose Art Gallery to host their summer camps and to teach kids about local Aurora history as well as Hillary House. Uh, with, like Jeff said, um, the easing of restrictions, we did take the opportunity to get back out into the community as that is um, very important to the AHS. Um, we were represented at the Home Show, the Street Festival, the Senior Active Living Fair, Culture Days and Multicultural Festival, and the Aurora Public Libraries Just For You and from the AHS Collections programs. And we also remain dedicated to our fundraising efforts by hosting uh, profitable in-person fundraising events. So we have the uh, Victorian Harvest Tea on the left, the golf tournament in the middle, and the Hillary Host Ball on the right. And um, we also hosted a Mother's Day Tea um, as well. And we wouldn't be able to do it without our um, amazing, amazing, amazing volunteers. So although we did see some volunteer hesitancy uh, still in 2022, um, we did see an increase in volunteer hours when compared to 2021. Um, much closer to our pre-COVID levels. And this, I think, really um, truly uh, reflects the community's deep uh, commitment to heritage. 
And finally, our 2022 KPIs. So I realize there's a lot on the screen here and we'll go through them uh, fairly briefly. So in 2022, we saw an increase in most of these KPIs. Um, eased COVID-19 restrictions led to more in-person programs and outreach opportunities, which of course then resulted in a wider in-person reach in 2022. We saw an over 200% increase in the people actually welcomed into the house as we had um, kind of more extended opening hours and a significant increase in people engaged through our outreach events because, of course, these didn't run in 2021. Uh, as I spoke to in the previous slide, our volunteer contributions were up to 3,176 hours uh, contributed by seven, or sorry, 80 volunteers. And although our online follower number is slightly lower than in 2021, um, we did see a steady increase on our platforms such as Facebook and Instagram, where we see the majority of our um, engagement and an increase, uh, sorry, about a 50% increase in our online engagement. So that was up to 31,547 um, in 2022. So that is up from 2021. And that concludes the end of my report. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments for Kathleen? Well, I will comment. I think Kathleen uh, and the rest of the board I know joins me. You've done a terrific job this year, so thank you very much. One of the one of the, the really exciting things I think that just recently happened was the children's tea, and some of you may have had an opportunity to attend the Victorian tea that we host, uh, but this was a children's tea that was sold out in almost record time, which is really a great sign. Uh, that people are interested in not only coming back to Hillary House, but making sure members of their younger, the younger members of their family come as well. So um, well done, Kathleen, on that one. Jeff, can I jump in? Yes, sir. Thanks. Thanks very much. And I, I, I just wanted to um, underline Jeff's point. I, I think that Kathleen, um, through the course mm -hmm. of, of last year and, and on a continuing basis, has uh, has put our minds to rest on a number of things, and you you saw some elements, particular to maintenance, which um, which I think are just so important uh, to uh, to react as as need be, whether it uh, whether it be pest control or whether it be security. Um, you can't understate the uh, the effort that uh, Kathleen has made to, uh, uh, to to sort of bring us into um, into a really really good spot. And uh, we, we thank her uh, for all of her efforts um, in, in, in her humble way. So thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Well, And now I'll turn it back to you, Well, for the, oh, uh, you the grounds maintenance and restoration report, please. I'll, I'll, um, I'll stay off mute then, Jeff. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> thanks very much. And, and uh, I, I won't, uh, we, we've made some, um, some reference to, um, to the work that's uh, that's been underway, and and I will uh, admit to having difficulty differentiating 22 and 23, so I'm just going to kind of ramble, and uh, it, it'll probably uh, be for uh, for for both years. Um, one of the things with with maintaining a property of um, of this nature, as uh, as many of you know, is um, is just trying to keep the grounds in a uh, a state of uh, of cleanliness, uh, of, of safety. Uh, and uh, and attractive to uh, to our visitors and and to our our fellow town uh, folk. Um, this is a this is a significant effort um, that is um, that is through the year, um, particularly relative to uh, to sort of spring uh, spring cleanup uh, and making sure that uh, we uh, we have the uh, the grounds in a in a presentable way that we can uh, be ready for uh, for the programming. Uh, summer, and and this is where I will um, particularly for 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 22 uh, call out uh, uh, John and Marjorie Bear, who uh, many of you know uh, spend hours and hours uh, on uh, on site, uh, whether it be um, cutting the grass or trimming bushes or or or, or caring for the many uh, many plants around. Uh, so I will call them out. In, in in 22, the town of Aurora also uh, supported us with um, with work uh, around the grounds, uh, in including the um, the cutting of the uh, that large sugar maple that uh, was very dangerously uh, looming over the house. Uh, so the town of Aurora has uh, supported us uh, greatly on the uh, on the grounds maintenance. Uh, and and for those of you who visit regularly, you'll know that uh, we we keep the uh, we keep the tennis court. Uh, in place, 
uh, with lines so that visitors can uh, can kind of see uh, a little bit of history. Um, we keep that cut with uh, John Bear's special mower uh, through the summer, and I think it uh, it continues to look uh, look great. Um, and in the winter, of course, um, snow maintenance, which uh, last year turned into no easy feat, as uh, as we found it very very difficult. Uh, to maintain costs on uh, on snow plowing, and the bottom line is costs went up, uh, but we were able to get a provider that uh, that did cut us a little bit of a break and and support us. So, in in, in terms of grounds maintenance, um, in in twenty two in particular, um, we uh, it was great to see lots and lots of uh, volunteers of all ages uh, out uh, doing some pretty hard work um, all uh, all through the year. Uh, I do want to have a little bit of a shout out and, and, and Donna Lewis, I know you're with us tonight because I saw your uh, your name there, but uh, in, in 23, and I will look forward to this report next year, uh, Donna Lewis, um, as we all know, the president of Garden Aurora has, uh, has stepped up. She, uh, we asked her to help us with a bit of a plan. Uh, she put a multi-plan, uh, multi-year plan together for us. Uh, and that plan is coming to fruition. I don't know if you've, um, if the members on the on the call tonight uh, have been around lately, but uh, I would urge you to go by. Uh, this uh, this is a year of uh, of remediation of uh, invasive species that have been allowed to grow over the years. And and Donna has led uh, crews and has uh, has has spent many many hours herself uh, helping us uh, with that remediation. So I, I, I do want to call you out, Donna, and with, uh, with, with big thanks, um, for all of your efforts. I showed up yesterday to take a couple of pictures and there she was, uh, on a Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. So, um, in terms of grounds maintenance, um, again, yearly, uh, yearly activities, uh, as, as we can all see the, the, um, the leaves and the walnuts are starting to fall on the um, on the back now. So uh, very soon we'll have uh, we'll have a crew of ten to twenty, uh, probably high school and beyond folks to uh, to help us uh, help us clean up, and then of course turn our minds uh, to winter. So with that, Jeff, uh, welcome any comments. But uh, I th I think we um, we we continue to be proud of. Um, uh, of the yard and the the uh, the external part of the house, uh, just as we are uh, of the inside part of the house. Thanks, thank you, Al. Uh, if there's any comments or questions on that, Al, specifically, with respect to the uh, the grounds maintenance, it's a it's a much bigger job than than it looks. So thank you, Al, for the work that you've done. Comments or is there anything, Kathleen? Alrighty, so then if I uh, could have a, a motion, we have a motion uh, that all reports as presented. Yeah. Or, yes. Sorry, we just have the restoration report. From oh, Al. I'm sorry. Thank you, Kathleen. Al, back to you for the restoration. I'll jump back in. Uh, thanks, Jeff. And um, uh, there, there's been a mention, and again, I'm going to focus efforts on uh, on on 22. Um, the the big effort in uh, in 2022 was completion of the uh, the veranda restoration that um, folks have earlier tonight made reference to the fact it was not only an aesthetic um, restoration but one of safety and uh, we're pleased that uh, we were able to bring that particular project at a cost and we all know um, restoration is expensive uh, at a cost to us but uh, we are very pleased with uh, with the look. Uh, the feel and uh, and 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 the uh, the view from um, from Young Street, etc., of uh, of the veranda project. Uh, I will note uh, for those of you who have been at the house recently that part of um, our outstanding work related to that project is the north garden immediately adjacent to the veranda. We have some work to do to tidy up um, what was done there. So that's just something we haven't got to, but that um, when we get a group of volunteers together, we'll um, uh, we'll work on that probably next year, given that uh, fall is coming uh, quickly. Thank you, Al. And I will now uh, move by Bob McRoberts and seconded by Dan Revington that all reports as presented are accepted. And if there's any comments or questions, please raise your hand or put it in the chat box. Nothing, seeing uh, no negative votes, I will declare the motion as carried. Thank you very much. Um, 
it is now my uh, privilege to to thank uh, a number of people who have uh, left us in in that, that doesn't sound right who who left the board in 2022 uh, Pat Wallace uh, retired at the end of November um, Ronan Grun Ron Ronan Grunberg uh, who has been our tech support person uh, for quite a long time. His term has ended and he is retiring from the board. And we thank Ronan very much for the work that he has done in order to keep us up and running and, and keep our emails getting delivered. Councillor Sandra Humphreys, uh, who was the council representative, her term finished at the conclusion of council last term. We thank Sandra for her input and her assistance with uh, any issues that we have at the town. And finally, I would like to thank Martin Pavio. Martin uh, left us about halfway through 2022 due, due to some family medical issues. Uh, and we thank Martin for his input uh, and to uh, uh, wish him and his family well. And although um, not directly 2022, many of you would know Peter Sturmo. Uh, Peter retired from the board at, after the uh, 20, 2021 AGM. Uh, Peter was recently involved in a uh, an accident out at the airport. Uh, he was in hospital for a few days. He is at home now. I spoke to him today. Uh, he is recovering and uh, getting back on his feet. So we uh, we wish Peter well. And um, I guess if you if anybody wanted to reach out to Peter, uh, if you wanted to contact the office, we could pass along those greetings for you. And I'm sure Peter would appreciate that. We would now like to. Uh, nominate move to the nomination of directors uh the first one is standing for re-election and that is al lambert and that is moved by me on behalf of the board and it has been seconded by uh tim jones that al lambert be re-elected to the board of directors and i will take that one separately and then uh to the next one so kathleen if there's any um comments or uh questions on that none i'll declare that carried and then uh, returning to the board is John Green, and again moved by myself on behalf of the board and seconded by Tim Jones. Uh, Kathleen, any comments or questions on that? I will declare that motion carried. Thank you, Al, for uh, stepping up again. Appreciate that. And thank you very much, John Green, for returning to the board. We, we appreciate your support. And there's, I guess, a bit of uh, what goes around comes around because John is the one who got me on the board a couple of years ago. So looking forward to 2023-24, um, hosting in-house and traveling exhibitions. Uh, Kathleen has been working on this for quite a while and I think that's gonna be a pretty exciting event for us. Returning of uh, new events and continue, uh, returning of current events and uh, new events coming forward that Kathleen will be unrolling as we get through the year. Enhanced collaborations, uh, working more closely with the Cultural Center, with um, the Museum and Archives, as well as other cultural partners in town. So we're managing to, to spread our wings in that area. Uh, youth mentorship program, again, getting, uh, getting the younger members of the Aurora community involved. We Continue to try and host fundraising events. It is, it's proving to be a challenge. We keep working at that. And um, we have, as a matter of fact, we have a scotch tasting coming up on October the 3rd, which is being run for us by the Aurora Whiskey Society. I can guarantee that there will be five very good whiskeys to try, not all from Scotland. There is one from Japan. There is one from India. Uh, I've tried an Indian one before that's really quite good. And I believe there's still some tickets left, Kathleen. Uh, so if you wanted to contact the office, uh, $125 uh, is, a, is a good event and it's hosted uh, by Keith Scott as a man who uh, very much knows his whiskey. If, if you, it's, it's fun to attend just to listen to Keith speak, actually. Uh, Multi-year grounds and landscaping plan. As, as Alan mentioned, we've been working with Donna Lewis uh, to put together a plan uh, and we're starting to see some of the benefits of that already. And for anybody who's been at the house, they will see huge mounds of mulch, uh, which we get for free. So that's great. Uh, and that's, that was work that was done by Kathleen. If you've been by the front of the house and noticed it looks better, but you can't quite put your finger on it, Parks Canada came through and rebuilt the fence earlier this spring. 
and they uh, they did a terrific job and it looks great. Uh, we have looked at increasing our rental revenue. Uh, we're getting more opportunities to rent out Hillary. As it looks better, people are more inclined to come here and use it for wedding photography and things like that. Uh, we secured a grant to fund the hire of an intern to assist with the evaluation of the Godfrey Collection. The Godfrey Collection has been uh, with the Aurora Historical Society for a number of years. Uh, and for the last few years, it's been in storage uh, at um, um, Apple Storage, I guess, up in Apple Storage, Kathleen? up in Newmarket. Um, and our, again, our thanks to the town for helping us uh, to secure that storage. We moved that all back into Hillary House uh, and we have a young lady who is working very diligently uh, on that. And she's already found, Kathleen, perhaps you could speak to some of the interesting things that she has found. Yeah, sure. So she's already um, only gone through, I think three of the boxes um, of probably, uh, I think the, estimated 50 to 70 boxes um uh and she's already found some original documents from William Osler who was um kind of a premium player in the history of medicine in Ontario and helped found the um John Hopkins Medical School down in the states um so those are very interesting and uh like I said she's only gone through a few of the boxes so um we can't wait to uh, see what we find next so that's, that's been a project that we've been looking at doing for quite a while. So we're quite excited that that's moving forward. Thanks, Kathleen. I will now uh, open it up if there's any general questions or comments. Um, uh, please feel free to, to raise your hand, uh, put in a chat, or maybe even Al. Jeff, I just I just wanted to jump in as, um, as we've got... Um, our membership here tonight and, and um, you know, appreciate that uh, John, John Green has, um, uh, has, has joined us back on the board. Um, we, we have um, advertised for board members and, and, and interested parties for, for a while. Uh, and the interest is, is, is going down. Uh, I, I think I would say to, um, to our members that, um, you know, we, we need more board members and we are now, uh, I guess, five um, with um, uh, with uh, with John. Uh, but I would just urge you to think about uh, how, how you how you might be able to help us out, because it's uh, uh, we're, we're small but mighty. But um, it, it does uh, take a lot of time, a lot of effort to, um, uh, to 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 move things forward. So I would just. Uh, urge folks to to maybe sort of think about either uh, either supporting us on the board or um or come and volunteer because we we're, we always need people so just a just a little bit of a a psa for uh, for us on the board and and volunteers uh, more generally jeff thanks Al. appreciate that uh kathleen no comments or questions nobody else okay thank you very much i will then um uh, Accept the motion to adjourn. That's been moved by Michelle Primo and Al Lambert. So the motion is carried. Thank you all very much for attending. We appreciate you attending, taking time out of your Monday evening to be with us. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out uh, to the office. Or I know that the emails that went out have my contact information. So certainly if you feel that I can answer some questions for you, do not hesitate to contact us. And with that being said, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your Monday evening.